And then there are the scientists who work with worms. About the roundworm. C. elegans is not to be confused with the roundworms that trouble household pets. This nematode lives in the soil and dines on bacteria. About the size of a grain of sand, it grows rapidly in the laboratory and has a transparent body making it easy to monitor its internal systems. It has 959 cells, not counting germ cells. It has 19,820 genes, and it grows old and dies in two to three weeks, although, as we are about to discover, that is not always true. The roundworm was the first multi-celled creature to have all its genes, its genome, completely deciphered. It's a laboratory favorite because it has complete nervous, muscle, reproductive, and feeding systems, much like those who choose to consider themselves higher creatures. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. You look at these, it's like a miracle. You look at the place of worms. We grow worms on little petri dishes. Cynthia Kenyon is one of the superstars in the realm of roundworm researchers. She's figured out how to double their lifespan. Old worms acting like frisky youngsters. This would be like a 90-year-old person. When you look at them, you think they're 45. You can't tell that they're... It's not like a 90-year-old person that looks like a healthy 90-year-old person. It's like a 90-year-old person who looks 45. What's their secret? Well, in a sense, good genes, or a lack of them, courtesy of Kenyon and her researchers at the University of California in San Francisco. Using chemicals or x-rays to mutate them, they deactivated various worm genes to try and find one that regulated the aging process. They did. In fact, they found two. Well, it turns out that worms have a gene in them that we think of as the fountain of youth gene. And this gene is called DAF16. We think of it as sweet 16 in a way because it's a youthfulness gene. The second gene, DAF2, earned a gloomier nickname. It's like the grim reaper inside of the worm making it get old. Very strange and unhappy thought, but there it is. Kenyon's team discovered that DAF2 regulates the activity of DAF16. Together, the two genes work as part of an elaborate hormonal pathway that defines the rate of aging in a worm. Consider a normal worm. Now look at this sad individual. This is an old worm. See, this little head is moving here. But you can see that it has a, an old quality to it that is obvious if you look at it. It's, I, would, I often say that they're in the nursing home. But a mutant worm, one without the grim reaper gene, is much more energetic. Now this is the mutant worm. Look, he's just as old as the ones I just showed you that were in the nursing home. But this guy is moving around. He's vigorous, he's healthy, he's moving around, he's doing things, you know, he's running a company. DAF2 and DAF16 turn out proteins which allow cells to respond to hormones, which in turn play a key role in the rate of aging in worms, and possibly in humans. The worm's hormones also respond to external stimuli, like smell and taste. For instance, Kenyon discovered that knocking out the genes that create the neurons in a worm's nose make the worm live longer. Taking out certain reproductive cells early in life has the same effect. After a decade spent studying literally thousands of worms, these findings have led Cynthia Kenyon to one certain conclusion. Aging, at least in roundworms, is not something that just happens. Bodies don't inevitably deteriorate with time. The process is highly regulated and therefore controllable. This really flies in the face of ideas that aging is just a passive, natural consequence of just being alive. You know, because look, I mean, we do one thing, change one gene, they double the lifespan, that's already amazing. Then we kill two more cells, and now we have a, we quadruple the lifespan. So can the same thing happen with people? Can we extend our lives, or at least delay old age? The DAF2 and DAF16 genes are present in humans, and similar hormonal pathways exist. 
we still don't know whether these genes and hormones regulate our aging, but Kenyon thinks that this is likely to be the case. The genes that control the aging in tiny little animals like little worms that live in the soil, like the ones we study, are the same as the genes that control development in us. They're just used differently, but they're the same genes. Just like if you build a big house, you build it with the same tools and blueprints that you'd use to build a small house. Worms and humans, believe it or not, have a lot in common. Our fundamental cell processes and 70% of our genomes. Aging in roundworms and aging in human beings may occur differently or simply differ in scale. Good going. Cynthia Kenyon's tiny worms, just a millimeter long, may have revealed the fountain of youth for all creatures, great and small. You look at these things and you just, you know, you lose your, your hair starts standing up. I mean, it's just an, such a powerful feeling because you've done something, you've kind of gone somewhere that you didn't know you could go, you know. So anyway, it's a very dramatic feeling and I have to, I have to say, you know, it really takes a while to get your mind around it, to really realize that it's really possible. For, and then once you realize that it really is possible for the worm, then um, uh, who knows, you know, maybe, maybe it's possible for all animals. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.